Hello, thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to show you guys a practical example on how to turn an ordinary digital camera into a hyperspectral camera. I have already talked about the theoretical aspect of this problem in one of my prior videos, but in this video, I want to show you guys a practical example. Let's get started. As I said, this video is going to be a practical example on how to turn an ordinary digital camera into a hyperspectral camera. After receiving some emails about this topic and some of the comments on the prior video I made on this topic, I decided to make a new video in which a practical example is also presented. Hopefully this helps clear up some of the vague points in the prior video. For more theoretical information on this topic, I refer to that video which is my fifth video on my channel. In the current video, I want to be more focused on a practical example in which I use the method suggested here to estimate the spectral reflectance of objects or their hyperspectral image from an ordinary digital camera. As I said before, we need to have a camera that is capable of outputting raw images and also a standard color chart with known spectral reflectance values. We use Nikon camera and Macbeth color checker for that purpose. This chart contains 24 patches. In a sense, Macbeth color checker is used as a training sample and every other image for which we estimate the hyperspectral image is a testing sample. The mean values of each patch in terms of RGB camera response for each channel is computed. At the end of this process, we should have a matrix of size 24 by 3, where 24 stands for each patch and 3 stands for RGB channels. The lighting condition is also very important. One point worth mentioning regarding the lighting condition is that if your lighting is not uniform, you need to perform flat filling in which an image of a white surface is taken after the image of the object under the study is taken. Then you have to divide the object image by the white surface image which takes care of the illumination non-uniformity present in the original image. Here, because our lighting is uniform enough, we did not have to do that. The next thing is to linearize the camera photometric response. The linearized camera response for red, green, and blue channels are given as follows. Now this linearized RGB camera response are used in the process of spectral reflectance recovery using a simple SEDU inverse or linear regression method. Let's say we have all the spectral reflectance information of the color chart in the visible part of the spectrum in matrix R, whose size is 24 by 31 where 24 refers to the 24 patches of Macbeth color checker and 31 refers to the spectral reflectance data from 400 to 700 at 10 nanometer interval. We also have a matrix of size 24 by 3 which contains the linearized RGB camera response shown by RGB LIN. Using the following equation, we obtain a matrix M which transfers RGB color data to the spectral reflectance data, as you see here where PENV stands for SEDU inverse. Therefore, having the matrix M, we could easily turn any digital camera into a hyperspectral camera by simply multiplying the RGB image by matrix M. So this is the process of turning any image into a hyperspectral image using this matrix M. We first reshape the image, and then we linearize it, and then we multiply it by matrix M, and then we reshape it into a hyperspectral image. Before we go to MATLAB, here is the data we are going to use in this work. The small Macbeth color checker will be used as training data and the rest will be used as testing. Now let's go to MATLAB and show you guys the procedure firsthand. So here is our training data. The first thing I did was to split the data into three RGB channels separately. And for that I'm going to be using this script. I first read the image. And then I come down here and I'm going to split it into RGB channels separately. Because the program I have written uses each channel separately, so it's better to first split the image into separate RGB channels. And after that, I'm going to be saving the images here. R channel, G channel, and then B channel. And I'm going to be using slot 1, slot 2, and slot 3. And then right after that, I'm going to be computing the mean patch values for Macbeth color checker. And this is the script that I have written for that. I first specify where the images are located, and then I go through them and I read them, and then I specify the size of the Macbeth color checker, which has four rows and six columns. And this function here is going to be specifying where each patch is located. 
I'm gonna put all the scripts and functions in this work on my GitHub and then you guys could have access to them through a link that I'm gonna provide to you guys on my YouTube channel which is gonna be right under the video right after the patch mask function is applied then you just come down and compute mean patch value for each patch of the Macbeth color checker and then you just save the main patch values of course you have to first select the folder in which you want to save the main patch values and now that this is done you have to linearize the camera response using these main patch values for camera linearization i'm going to use excel so in the linearization process all we want to do is to just find the relationship between luminance factor and camera digit counts for the neutral samples so the neutral samples on Macbeth color checker are the 19th to 24th patch. 19th is white and the 24th is black. So you could see that I'm fitting the relationship between the white tristimulus values of the neutral patches and their camera response. So I'll choose the relationship that has the highest R square and you could see that this one has 999. So I choose the relationship with the highest R square. You could see that this one has 0.999 and the same thing with the green channel almost and almost the same thing with the blue channel and you can see that the relationship is the third degree polynomial I like Excel because it's very easy to see the relationship and also the R square so you should know that this camera response are the mean patch values for the neutral patches so when you calculate the mean patch values here let me load this so this is the mean patch value okay so here are the mean patch values for the neutral patches this is for the red green and blue channels you just have to come here and you put the red green blue channels here and then you calculate the white tri stimulus values of the neutral patches and you just fit the relationship between them with the highest r square and then you use this equation to linearize camera response which i'm going to show you how so the next step is to use the SEDU inverse to estimate the spectral reflectance of objects or to just turn an ordinary digital camera into a hyperspectral camera, that magic M matrix. This is a script that I need, light source, which has all the information about light source, standard observer, and again, this is going to be included with all the scripts that I'm going to be putting on my GitHub. And this is the spectral data of the Macbeth color checker. And then this is how I'm calculating CIE XYZ tri stimulus values. And then this is where I'm loading the mean patch values that I already calculated. And then I'm going to put them in X. And this is where I'm using those linearization equations. All I have to do is to just put those mean patch values into the axis right here. And then they're going to turn the camera response into a linearized camera response as you can see here. And then I'm going to be using the linearized camera response in order to estimate the matrix M. I would like to also show you guys the matrix M, which is like some sort of a matrix of primaries. And now that I have matrix M, I could turn any image into a hyperspectral image. But then I have to again linearize the image the same way as I showed here. So you come here, you read the image, and then you feed the image through the linearization process as shown here. And then now that the image is linearized, you multiply by matrix M, and that would be your hyperspectral image. And then I'm going to be showing you guys some of the channels, the first, 15th, and 31st channel here. And then, in order to just visualize the image, I'm going to turn it into an sRGB image. For that, I have to first turn it into an XYZ image, and then from there, I go to sRGB image. Then I'm going to save it as sedu.tiff. Before I run this, I'm going to first run the mean patch values to show you guys how this works. So you just run this one, you choose the data, which is going to be those split channels, the red, green, and blue channels. You select the folder in which that split image is located, and you just have to locate the Macbeth color checker. The first patch is this one, which is the patch above the white. It's the first patch, the second patch. And then the third one, the third point should be here because it says click corner near patch 18. And then the last one is going to be black. And then when you do this, automatically it's going to compute the mean patch values. And then you just save the results in anywhere you want. I'm going to be just saving it in this folder. So everything is done. Then you use these mean patch values to linearize camera response as I told you guys. 
and then you guys come here I'm gonna clear everything and then just run this script so you could see that these are some of the bands from the hyperspectral data this is the 31st band and this is the 15th band and this is the first band and here's the visualization of that hyperspectral data under D65 illuminant. And here is the original image that was captured by the camera under D65 light source. And this is the visualization of the hyperspectral image under D65 standard illuminant. You could see that they're not the same. In other words, the visualization of the hyperspectral image that we have here is the standard version of this image which was captured under D65 light source simulator, quote unquote. So before I end this video, I would like to talk to you guys about the matrix M. Matrix M, as you can see, is some sort of a matrix of primaries. It has the short wavelength primary, middle wavelength primary, and the long wavelength primary. So in other words, we extract these primaries from the training samples and using these primaries we estimate the spectral reflectance of the testing samples and as you can see from this equation in which the spectral reflectance of the testing samples are estimated the testing samples RGB response are multiplied by each primaries and then they are summed up so in other words the RGB response of the camera to the testing sample specifies the amount of each primary for that testing sample so then using these primaries that are extracted from the training samples we are able to estimate the spectral reflectance of the testing samples and I hope this helps because this is a new look that you could have on the SEDU inverse method and it's not anything more than color matching in other words, we are matching the spectral reflectance of the testing samples using this spectral reflectance of the primaries. So you saw that we were able to successfully turn an ordinary digital camera into a hyperspectral camera. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it and you were able to get something out of it. If you liked it, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel and also share the video with your friends. Thank you so much and have a nice day.